It is an excellent season and day for us as we know God has a dream for each one of us. And so even today we're talking about part 12, the final teaching of a series about the acts of the church today. I believe you worked through the central themes of the book of Acts as you've gone with us through part 1 to 11 in this series. Today we are looking together at the conclusion of the matter when all has been heard. We see Solomon saying in Ecclesiastes 1 verse 2 and verse 14, Meaningless, meaningless, says the teacher. Utterly meaningless. Everything is meaningless. And then verse 14, I have seen all the things that are done under the sun. All of them are meaningless. Chasing, a chasing after the wind. My question today, is absolutely everything meaningless and a chasing after the wind? The dangerous question. Who determines in your life what is meaningless? Who determines what in your life is a chasing after the wind? If you don't know who it is, if you cannot identify or distinguish who it is, then you are most probably busy with a lot of things that are utterly meaningless every day. We could feel that the book Ecclesiastes gives a very negative, pessimistic perspective about life, but actually not at all. <clears throat> it is a book of hope, if I can understand the conclusion about life and what it is all about. It is a book about fulfillment and gladness of heart, if I am willing to reevaluate my life with Holy Spirit and change certain perspectives to see things the way our Father sees it. So what is the main point, summary, conclusion of everything when we talk about life? There is a court case about the conclusion, the final decisions, in our hearts and minds every day, and how according to that we live and choose certain actions and reactions. We are constantly evaluating what the most important thing is to do, to give attention to every day. For example, there is a testimony given in my mind and heart by my circumstances that things are too hectic, too rough, intense, and also a testimony given by my emotions that I'm discouraged and frustrated as it is confirmed by facts according to my mind, a final conclusion is made in my heart to drag myself along through the day with no expectation and just coping and to cope in, to, in getting the day over and done with and to wait and see what tomorrow will throw at me. No. Let us have a court case about the reality of life every day and bring in and allow credible, reliable testimonies from witnesses that truly know all about life before we make our final decisions every day about what to do, what to feel, what to choose, how to act and respond to life or to have a life. <clears throat> so my brother, my sister, we read in Romans 8 about the Holy Spirit that testifies in my spirit and with my spirit, first about my true identity in Christ, but then also every day about every opportunity and challenge that we have, will have. Allow him to bring the final testimony before every final conclusion in your heart. With a court case about the conclusion, the final decisions in our hearts every day on earth, we find strong evidence according to the facts that what men are keeping themselves busy with, that most of it is utterly meaningless and they're chasing after the wind. 
But then, by God's grace, clear evidence, clear testimony is given by the Holy Spirit in our spirit, and it is His utmost desire for us to focus and to listen, first of all, to what He has to say before making decisions daily that define what we do every day. There are so many facets that we can look at from the book Ecclesiastes even. But let us look at only five facets and evaluate our lives with Holy Spirit. And if in this court case with God's word as the judge today we can make sense of life. My words, the first point, the first facet will be my words coming from my heart's attitude and choices here on earth. The second one will be my time as a blessing or a curse here on earth. Third one will be my work and the impact thereof here on earth. Number four, my relationship with God here on earth. Number five, my choices every day about who will keep me busy and with what every day here on earth. Let's look at point number one, my words. We see in Ecclesiastes 1 verse 13, verse 12, no, no, 13, yes. I devoted myself to study. I devoted Basically, I choose. That's my decision. I devoted myself to study and to explore by wisdom all that is done under heaven. What a heavy burden God has laid on men. But I need God's wisdom to understand that. <coughs> we see also chapter 2 verse 15. Then I thought in my heart, the fate of the fool will overtake me also. What then do I gain by being wise? I said in my heart, I said in my heart, this too is meaningless. This is what I say in my heart and from what I say I make certain decisions. That's the words working that's alive in me. No, let's make sure what is working in my heart. Amen. Chapter 5, verse 2. We see, do not be quick with your mouth. Do not be hasty in your heart to utter anything before God. God is in heaven and you are on earth. So let your words be few. May God help us that we will be arrested in our hearts to understand what we entertain and what not. It must be according to His heart. Amen. We are talking still about my words coming from my heart's attitude. Chapter 6, verse 11. The more the words, the less the meaning. And how does that profit anyone? Chapter 7 verse 25 so I turned my mind to understand to investigate I make that decision I turned my mind to understand to investigate and to search out wisdom the wisdom of God and the scheme of things and to understand the stupidity of wickedness and the madness of folly May Holy Spirit help you to do that in God's wisdom. Also, in chapter 9, verse 17. The quiet words of the wise are more to be heeded than the shouts of a ruler of fools. The shouts of a ruler of fools. They are words, voices that can shout at me in my heart. <clears throat> the shouting of the words of temptation, of inferiority, of performance, of self-condemnation, of all these negative things 
the voice of depression and shout at me. But no, 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 from my spirit, I need to hear the quiet words of the wise. God, the Holy Spirit, people led by the Spirit, oh, let us yield our hearts to those words. In Jesus' name, let it be so. Also, lastly, about my words, chapter 10, verse 12. Words from a wise man's mouth are gracious, but a fool is consumed by his own lips. In selfishness, focusing on our hurt, focusing on our successes or our failures, we will understand how to be a fool. But words from a wise man's mouth are gracious. My brother, my sister, we are surrounded by God's grace, God's enablement. He will enable us to understand how to speak the words that will be for edification and words that will honor God, words that will come from His mouth. By His grace, we will be enabled to speak truth that will set us free, truth in line with His words. 